Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IIT J Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today I have brought a very uh, interesting video. Uh, this is uh, from 200 more puzzling problems in physics by Peter Nardig and others. And it was requested by one of the students, Deepya Man Mukherjee. So here I am. It's a very complicated problem and I've put in a lot of hard work. So I really expect you to give it a thumbs up at least to appreciate my hard work. And it's a very complicated video. Let me tell you in advance. So I'll require your full attention so that you are able to really understand what's happening here. So let's get into the uh, analysis of this uh, problem. Uh, first of all, I'll present the problem and then I'll present the analysis. It's a very complicated problem. So let's see. Okay, so here's the problem. A cart wheel of radius 50 meter has 12 spokes assumed to be of negligible width. Okay. It rolls along a level ground without slipping and the speed of its axle is 15 meter per second. Okay. Estimate the minimal speed a crossbow bolt of 20 centimeter long must have if it is to pass unimpeded between the spokes of the wheel. So just for imagination think instead of cart wheel just imagine a bicycle wheel and you are pushing a rod through the uh, spokes of the bicycle, right? So what will happen if you are not quick enough to push this uh, uh, rod through the spokes, it will collide with the spokes and the spokes may get damaged. So uh, so you, you have to push the rod at a very fast speed and there has to be some certain minimum speed. Otherwise, the, your uh, this cross bolt, whatever he is calling crossbow bolt, or just think of a rod that needs to be passed at a very fa fast speed. You have to find the minimum speed so that it doesn't collide and it is able to pass through the spokes without uh, damaging the spokes. Okay. So if I estimate the minimal speed a crossbow bolt 20 centimeter long must have if it is to pass unimpeded between the spokes of the wheel. Okay. Neglect any vertical displacement of the bolt so you can ignore the effect of gravity that it's coming down uh, while passing through. Okay. It is okay if you come up with an equation which can't be exactly solved manually. Try solving it numerically using a computer algebra system or otherwise. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so I'll get into my analysis right away. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. So uh, so what's the problem equivalent to? Imagine that bicycle is uh, bicycle wheel is rolling and you are putting your finger. Not a very good idea, but let's say you're putting your finger. So how long can you keep the finger inside so that it doesn't get uh, collide? So if you can find out that time, then the length of the bolt you uh, need to pass through so during that time so that uh, it doesn't collide, right? So you just need to find out the time for how long you can keep your finger inside the uh, bicycle uh, wheel so that, uh, I mean, it, <laughs> there's no accident, okay? Maximum for how long, okay? So the problem is equivalent to solving the Following question, for how long may we put our fingers between the spokes of a wheel without touching them? Okay. So, uh, so first of all, we need to imagine that what kind of motion our fingers will have with respect to the wheel. What is the motion? Uh, so, we'll try to visualize that. So, so first of all, to visualize that, what we are going to do is to solve this. We shall imagine pasting a paper on the wheel and holding a pencil on the paper. Uh, still on with respect to ground. So wheel is rolling. So I keep a pencil still in front of the wheel like, like that. Okay. So now what will happen? This pencil will trace out some curve on the wheel. Okay. So I want to see what kind of curve is traced on the wheel. Okay. So uh, we hold a pencil on the paper still with respect to ground and visualize the mark produced on the paper. And uh, without loss of generality, see at some point or the other when we are holding pencil at a fixed height, uh, at some point of time, my pencil will be nearest to the um, center of the wheel, right? So I am calling that as t equal to 0 when my pencil is nearest to the center of the wheel, okay? So, or I can say when pencil is just below the center of the wheel, so that I am calling as t equal to 0. So uh, for imagination, this is my wheel and my pencil, this point is uh, p at t equal to 0 and this is the center of the wheel at t equal to 0 and it's rolling with omega, okay? So now uh, what we'll do? We shall work from the rest frame of the wheel and find the polar parametric equation of the trace. So uh, this some kind of trace is being formed and I'm interested in finding the polar parametric equation of that trace. So how to find that polar, polar parametric uh, trace? So you know that there are two aspects to a polar equation. One is the angle and the other is the distance, right? So I will find the distance of the pencil from the uh, center as a function of time and I'll also find the angular position of the pencil with respect to the center of the wheel as a function of time. So let's see how to proceed. So the wheel has two motions. One is center is moving ahead with velocity 
d is equal to omega r because of which entire universe appears to move backward with with the same velocity omega r so everything up from the center of the wheel everything appears to be moving backward with the speed omega r but not only it appears to move at a speed omega r but the wheel is also rotating so what's the other motion wheel is rotating clockwise with omega so because of which universe appears to rotate uh, rather wheel is uh, yeah uh, this should have been anti clockwise not clockwise let me change this one so there should be here anti clockwise okay so let me put the anti clockwise so since the wheel is rotating in the clockwise sense the entire universe appears to be rotating in the anti clockwise sense with the same omega so now we need to look at the superposition of the two effects and uh, uh, we'll see uh, uh, what are the uh, theta and r coordinates of the pencil mark in terms of uh, uh, in the rest frame of the wheel so let's see so now what is the radial distance so r is fairly simple see wheel is moving forward with omega r so in in t time the center moves ahead with uh, a distance omega rt or we can say with respect to the center the point p would have moved backward a distance uh, uh, omega rt in like this and this distance let us say is eta r so i am holding so eta is a parameter so if r is the total radius of the wheel i am holding the pencil at a distance of eta r uh, uh, below the center and i can vary eta to visualize what happens when um, uh, pencil is he held at different different heights okay so this height is eta r and this is omega rt so what is the distance of the pencil from the center so that's simple pythagoras theorem omega rt square plus eta r square so this is our uh, distance of the pencil from the center so we have got already got the distance as a function of time right now we also need to find out the angle that the pencil makes uh, with the uh, positive x direction at a general time t from the again from the rest uh, frame of the wheel and not from the ground frame okay so please bear in mind since wheel is rotating the angle made from the frame of the wheel will be different from what is the apparent angle from the ground frame for example this is the apparent angle from the ground frame but since the wheel has rotated so actual angle is not this we will need to take into account the rotation of the wheel also okay so let's see uh, how to find out that angle okay so now let us work out the angle made by r in the rest frame of the wheel okay so this is your positive x axis so this much angle is of course pi by 2 or if you want to sign uh, get a sign value this is minus pi by 2 right and then let us say this angle is phi so from the ground frame how much is this angle see this is minus pi by 2 and this is minus phi and tan phi is what you see this is omega rt and this is your eta r so we can say this whole angle let us say this is beta so had the wheel not been rotating the polar angle of p dash would have been beta is equal to pi by 2 plus phi or if you want to take the sine value you can just put a minus sign over here so polar angle from positive x axis is minus pi by 2 plus phi where phi is what phi is tan inverse of omega rt upon eta r right so beta is minus of pi by 2 plus tan inverse of uh, omega rt by, uh, by eta r so uh, this would have been case had the wheel not been rotating okay but the wheel is rotating and wheel is rotating in the anti clockwise direction so entire world appears to rotate in the rather wheel is rotating in the clockwise direction so entire world appears to be rotating in the anti clockwise direction so actual angle will be less than this right okay so this uh, this line will appear to have shifted through an angle omega t in this direction right uh, in the opposite sense to the rotation of the wheel okay so that's what i've written however since the entire world has rotated anti clockwise by omega t the actual polar angle from the rest frame of the wheel becomes beta plus omega t okay like this so theta as a function of time is we just added b uh, omega t to the beta so this is our polar uh, the, the angular position of the uh, pencil mark uh, at general time t angular position of the pencil with respect to the rest frame of the wheel okay so now i have uh, distance of the pencil mark from the center as a function of time and we also have the angular position of the pencil mark as a function of time and now we just need to make the trace plot for various values of eta that what kind of uh, uh, trace we will get so i'll just show you i just tried to plot it in uh, mathematica uh, and i'll just show you the uh, manipulation of that plot so just let me get into the uh, mathematica okay okay so here you can see this is the plot in mathematica so i'll try to manipulate this so uh, let's see so uh, here i am going to vary eta so eta here right now the plot that you are seeing is for eta is equal to 
zero point one. Now suppose I change eta. Let us say so you can see this is the kind of plot. This is the kind of trace that the particle will have. I have uh, varied the time from minus one seconds to plus one seconds. So so right part of this branch is uh, for the negative time that is the past and this is t equal to zero and then this is the future uh, plot. So let's see what happens as I increase the value of eta. So you can see this plot. So as you increase the value of eta, this uh, this is how the plot marks look. So as you go farther, you keep the pencil lower and lower. This is how the mark uh, looks like. Okay. So this is the variation of the plot with respect to the va variation in eta. So I hope this is clear. So let me just play this. So as you vary the eta, how does this plot vary? This is how it varies. So uh, okay, maybe I should uh, run the animation both ways. So, so I hope this is clear. Okay, so this is what this is the nature of the trace that we get when we vary the value of eta. Okay, now let's get back to our analysis. Okay, okay, so so now that that's clear. So uh, uh, so here I have just uh, shown all the plots in just one. Uh, uh, I've just pasted all those plots in just one. So we can see this is the kind of uh, graph we get. Now let us superpose the spokes on this diagram. And if I superpose the spokes, the spokes may look something like this. And I expect the solution to be symmetric. That's why I've drawn uh, the spokes to be symmetric about this the, uh, the vertical line, right? Uh, because with respect to past and future, uh, I expect the optimal solution to be symmetric. So let's say this is the position of the spokes, 30 degree angle between the spokes and I've started from uh, this position. So from this position, I need to cover an angle of pi by 12 because I've started exactly from the bisector of this. And I want to go along that curve where this pi by 12 angle will be covered in the shortest possible time, right? And I want to find out what should be the uh, value of eta so that uh, I cover that angle in the shortest possible time. Okay. So what I've written, so let us superpose the spokes on this diagram. We want to choose that curve which maximizes the travel time between the two spokes. Okay. Or instead of um, uh, travel time between two spokes, I can also uh, say uh, which maximizes the travel time between t equal to zero and this uh, left spoke. Okay. So if we start from just below the center, we need to maximize time until the final angle is how much? See, this is the horizontal and up till bisector, this angle is pi by 2 and then there is pi by 12. So minus pi by 2 plus pi by 12 minus bracket I've taken outside. So I want final theta to be minus 7 pi by 12. Okay. Now, what is the parametric equation for angle with respect to time? If you see uh, our parametric equation of angle with respect to time is here. See, this is the equation, right? Omega t minus pi by 2 minus tan inverse of omega t by eta. This was the parametric equation. So in, in this, I can just put the value of theta and then uh, I have an equation in terms of, uh, terms of t and eta. So t becomes purely a function of eta, although this is an implicit function and not explicitly solvable. It's a transcendental equation nonetheless. So we can just put the value of uh, uh, final angle as minus 7 pi by 12 and uh, you know that uh, changing the omega should not uh, change the value of optimal eta because omega only uh, runs the video faster. Okay, so if you increase the omega, the events will happen faster. But uh, if you want to maximize the time, the height at which this time will be maximized should not depend on the value of uh, omega. So for simplicity, I can as well choose omega equal to one if I just want to find out what's the value of eta. So we need to maximize t for the above equation and for example choose here omega equal to 1 and now this is an implicit equation between t and eta. So t becomes a function of eta although not an explicit function. So what I can do, I can just make an implicit plot between t and eta and if you make that plot, I did that in Mathematica, it turns out that, uh, that uh, this uh, time gets maximized for eta is equal to 0.524. Okay, So we get the maximum value of time. Uh, Okay. Uh, in fact, I've uh, messed up a little bit. This should have been the time uh, I've messed up the axis. So I wanted to maximize the time. Actually, uh, I made a mistake in labeling. But nonetheless, you can see this somewhere over here. This is maximized, and this this is 0 0.524, and this axis is supposed to be eta. This axis is supposed to be eta and this is supposed to be time and here somewhere you will get the maximum time. So this happens to be coming at eta is equal to 0 0.524. Okay, you can see that from the graph. Uh, not, uh, uh, I mean, the analysis is correct, but I just uh, mismanaged the labels. Okay, 
So now plugging in the value of required value of eta, eta is equal to 0 0.524. I can now find out the value of required time. So uh, in our problem, eta, r and omega are given uh, in the original question. In fact, the velocity of the center is given and radius is given. So omega is nothing but velocity divided by radius. So if I just put in the value of eta as 0.24 and value of r and omega in equation 3, I can solve for time. And if you if you do that, that time comes out to be 0. Point, approximately 0. 0.057 seconds. So that means entire bolt has to pass through in 0. 0.057 seconds, right? And required velocities, bolt bolt length is 0.2 meter and this is the time. So speed of that bolt to cross through should be equal to 3.5 meter per second. Okay, so this is our final answer. And that was my fairly complicated analysis of a fairly complicated problem. Uh, so I hope you'd appreciate my hard work in this one and do give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And please share this video as much as possible with your friends uh, through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or whatever medium you use for uh, networking with your uh, fellow students uh, preparing for IITJ or Olympiads and uh, uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video and as always God bless you all. Thank you.